Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Kenny Norton has died. This is a huge loss for those of you who lived through the 1970s. And let me just point out, I'm still in my 40s, but, you know, the 1970s are a vivid memory for me. I never thought that I would be a cultural historian. But Ken Norton was actually bigger than the sport of boxing. By now, no doubt, you've read several obituaries. By now, no doubt, you realize that Ali, in three fights against Ken Norton, never ever convincingly beat Ken Norton. Ken broke his jaw and clearly won the first fight. The third fight in Yankee Stadium was so controversial that as I recall it, right, without reviewing any notes, they actually had a special on television with Brent Musburger to discuss the scoring of the fight. Right? Three fights, two men, no clear-cut winner, except for the first fight. Remarkably, the Ken Norton Ali trilogy, in a sense, mirrors the Fraser Ali trilogy, although in that trilogy, that ends with Fraser's corner pulling the plug. Who knows what would have happened in a thrill in Manila had Eddie Futch rolled the dice and had his blind fighter fight that last round. Well, with Ken Norton, there's no Eddie Futch pulling the plug conclusion like that. What you have are three fights where if Ali won two of them, he did so by barely nicking it, right? Let me also tell you that Joe Fraser in interviews openly talked about why he never fought Kenny Norton. And the reason was simple. The two men had sparred together. And according to Joe, Kenny knew him too well, right? Let me also point out from a boxing perspective, before I get to the cultural side, which in my opinion is bigger, from the boxing perspective, the latter part of the 1970s in the heavyweight division really did turn on the last round between Larry Holmes and Ken Norton in their championship fight. That round is a classic. It's one of the very best in heavyweight history. It's the kind of round where both guys lay it out on the table with a fight in the balance and both guys really lifted their reputations with that round. Larry Holmes would win the fight. He would then be a long reigning heavyweight champion. If you look at the numbers, Larry Holmes was one of the most successful heavyweight champions in history. Just understand that Larry Holmes needed that last round against Ken Norton to win the title. That fight hung in the balance, right? Ken Norton was at the doorstep, right? It's a great round. I encourage everyone to look at it. It's prime Larry Holmes. It's prime Ken Norton. Quite frankly, it's prime heavyweight division action. Now, all of that said, let me just say this, especially in the 1970s. The way boxing works, in my opinion, is that there are great champs in many divisions, skilled craftsmen who are superb at what they do and who deserve the attention of avid sports fans. But I believe we all know in the back of our minds that there's the heavyweight division and then there's everything else, right? It's as John L. Sullivan back in the day said in the 19th century, he walked into a bar and he said, I can lick any man in the house. We just assume that the baddest man on the planet is the heavyweight champion, right? As you look back through history and you think of great champs, 
It's when you think of charismatic heavyweight champions that, quite frankly, the world stands still. Right? You think back to Jack Johnson. Can anyone think of the 1920s without thinking of Jack Dempsey? If I ask you to name me the most dominant athletes, the most singular athletes in history who epitomized an era, there's Joe Lewis in the 1930s, right? Rocky Marciano in the 1950s. One of my personal favorites, Sonny Liston. Of course, there's the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Right? Very few men can walk through the streets of London and attract the crowd than Mike Tyson did shortly before fighting Julian Francis. Right? The streets were packed. Such is the power of the division. Right? You can have great welterweight champs. You can have great middleweight champs. You can have great lightweight champs. When a man is the former heavyweight champion of the world, that has a certain cachet. That has a certain premium. Now, when that guy has a natural charisma and is able to leave the ring and is able to make the transition to the screen, like Kenny Norton did in the 1970s, right? Totally different era. This is before laptops. This is before the internet. This is before cell phones. Let's understand who Kenny Norton was. Kenny Norton stars in the movie Mandingo. I cannot explain today how controversial that interracial movie was in the 1970s. It was controversial. Few people could pull it off. Kenny Norton did, right? Kenny Norton makes the transition. He becomes a bit of a Hollywood celebrity. I can tell you I was watching a beauty pageant. It was either Miss America or Miss Universe, right? Trying to, you know, uh, enjoy the beauty of the moment. And of course, one of the judges was Kenny Norton. You would watch these, you know, VIP events on television with, you know, the beautiful people from the era. And of course, Kenny Norton would be there. He was well-spoken. He was, you know, a guy who looked like a weightlifter. He symbolized really the top of the heavyweight division at that time. He had a natural charisma. Now, not every heavyweight champion is able to seamlessly make the transition into everyday life. There are many people who we respect and admire who just don't strike us for whatever reason is charismatic. I'm just here to tell you that Kenny Norton, as good as he was in the ring, and he was great in the ring, and he fought the biggest names of the era, right? Not just Ali, but also George Foreman. He even fought Jerry Cooney. He fought Ernie Shavers. He fought Jimmy Young, right? He fought the A-list. But more importantly, he also was able to be a cultural ambassador for the sport in society. Right, Kenny Norton, simply put, was a celebrity. Right, think about boxing today. You have a dominant heavyweight champion, Vitaly Klitschko. You have a long reigning heavyweight champion, Vladimir Klitschko. Now, maybe these guys are charismatic in the Ukraine. They might be. But neither guy strikes you as the kind of guy you would want to see as an action movie hero or a romantic lead in a Hollywood movie, right? You know, you might want to learn boxing from Vitaly Klitschko, but he's not the guy you'd want to go clubbing with, right? The guy who today best symbolizes the spirit of Ken Norton in his prime <clears throat> is heavyweight David Hay, right? He's the one guy who looks like he could hop out of the ring after a nice victory and then hit the club, attract the crowd, you know, uh, go to a screen test, get the part in a movie, and actually have you rooting for him as the lead in some action flick, James Bond or some film like Mandingo. That's who Kenny Norton was, right? Every fight fan has a group of boxers 
who they say, hey, if I were a boxer, that's the guy I'd want to be, right? For me, as a young kid back in the 1970s, let's just say, I know me and most of my friends, we all wanted to be Ali. And we all also wanted to be Kenny Norton, right? Those were the guys who had the charisma. Those were the guys who looked like they were living the life. Now, let me just tell you, I was devastated years later in the 1980s when I heard Kenny Norton had been in a car accident and was clinging to life. Let me just tell you, several of my friends at the time, you know, openly were traumatized by it. You know, because Kenny was the guy who was living the life, just like David Hay is now. You know, Kenny, Kenny was the heavyweight who had the charisma. There were better heavyweights. Larry Holmes was a better heavyweight. But Larry, the Eastern Assassin, yes, the nicknames were that politically incorrect back then, just didn't look like he was the kind of guy who would be a big hit in clubs. Kenny Norton did. Kenny Norton delivered on the promise of, you know, the man about town, right? Fortunately for all of us, Kenny Norton actually survived that horrific car crash. Wasn't quite the same, right? Walked with a limp after that, but he survived it. And years later, I was in Newport Beach with my then girlfriend at a diner. I looked over. I saw a guy who looked vaguely familiar. We both ended up at the cash register together to pay our bills and stuff, and it turned out to be Kenny Norton, who was a lot bigger than I thought he was. <laughs> and it was interesting because it was an awkward moment for me, right? I was looking at him. I know he didn't know who I was. I was just Joe Stranger. But I was looking at him, and I was starstruck. You know, such was who Kenny Norton was, right? I believe I could meet most boxers. And, you know, say, okay, great, this is a good craftsman. It takes a rear fighter for me to literally be unable to say anything. I was unable to say anything in Ken Norton's presence. He actually looked at me, and he actually nodded at me and said, hi, how's it going? I think he understood that there were a lot of people out there like me who saw him as a celebrity and who were speechless in his presence. I actually bumped into Kenny uh, other times in Newport Beach. You know, Newport Beach back then, uh, African Americans were an endangered species. We'll just put it that way. And when you're a brother in a white part of town and you see another brother, you make a note of it and you acknowledge the other guy. Let's just say that the few times I bumped into Kenny Norton, he was always gracious. He was always a gentleman. He actually delivered in public on the image I had of him in private. Now, Google tells me that most of the people who watch my videos are a little bit older, 35 and older. If you were a child of the 1970s, you remember Ken Norton outside the ring. You remember him wearing a white dinner jacket at beauty pageants, at award ceremonies, right? You remember him being eloquent, really being a cultural ambassador for the sport of boxing. From what I hear from those who know him, right, from the interviews I've read of his son, a great athlete, a former football player, Ken Norton Jr., right? And just the fact that men like Ernie Shavers, men like Thomas Hearns, men like Mike Tyson traveled to visit Kenny when he was in the hospital, right? From what I've heard, Kenny Norton was a great guy in real life. Boxing rarely has charismatic figures like this. Guys who can deliver in the ring against guys like Ali and who can deliver outside of the ring at beauty pageants and out on the town. That's who Ken Norton was. That's how I remember him. Let's just say this loss hit me harder than most. When I heard that Ken Norton had died, just like in that diner in Newport Beach, I was speechless. You know, part of me just seemed to believe that a guy like Ken Norton would live forever. Right? Trust me, as long as I'm here walking around this planet, Ken Norton certainly will always have a part 
in my memories. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also point out, too, and this is an interesting trivia point. That third fight, the Yankee Stadium fight, at a time when New York City was having so many problems that according to promoter Bob Arum, they only sold 10 tickets the day of the fight. <laughs> Think about it. The fight had about 20,000 people there, but the walk-up gate was about 10 people. Because if you were in New York City at the time, graffiti infested New York City, right? Um, you know, in New York City, that actually went bankrupt during that decade. You understood how crazy the 1970s were. I mean, crazy. Pre-computers on everyone's table, right? Just know that one of the judges for that fight was Harold Letterman. Now, I did score that fight. I did look at the fight. I've looked at the fight in hindsight. In fairness to Ali, Ali held his own in the fight. The fight easily could have been called a draw. I can see the scoring. Ali barely beating Ken Norton. But let's just say it's that close. Right? It's like Leonard Hagler. There are people out there, just know a sizable group, who firmly believe that Ken Norton beat Ali in at least two of the three fights. You're not going to convince them otherwise right people need to realize that that's where ken norton was in the ring in the 70s he was on par with muhammad ali thanks for watching